Stephen O'Reilly began his drumming journey as a young boy, and things really started to fall into place in his early 20s. With the formation of one of his first successful bands, Hollow Cries, Stephen pounded away in the thrash metal scene with unparalleled passion and enthusiasm. The band made a name for itself in Columbia, South Carolina, and was the opening act for Metal Master's Overkill, Napalm Death, and At The Gates. In early 1996, Stephen made his first trip into the studio as the drummer on a Hollow Cries demo tape. The demo proved to be a successful sales tool, and as a result, the next couple of years would find Stephen playing as many live shows as possible. It can be said that he was teaching himself about drumming and music while on stage. After relocating and taking some time off, Stephen found himself in the driver's seat of yet another metal powerhouse based out of Charlotte, North Carolina, a band known as Warmouth. It was here that Stephen began to recognize the finer aspects of drumming, such as groove, timekeeping, and the establishment of a solid pocket. After playing many live shows throughout the Southeast, Stephen was able to once again go back into the studio, laying down drum tracks for Warmouth's four-song EP. Warmouth was getting quite a reputation as a force to be reckoned with. Fred Durst of Limp Biscuit said Warmouth could quite possibly be the next Pantera. And Howard Stern had this to say about the groove metal band. Possibly one of the best ten unsigned bands in the Southeast. But due to bad management and financial trouble, Warmouth had run its course. In his mid-twenties, Stephen decided to return to where it all began, Columbia, South Carolina. Only this time, he stayed away from the metal music he had played for so long, and it turned out to be the right decision. He found himself holding down grooves for an established Latin funk band known as S-Tribe. In this project, Stephen was forced to completely rethink and relearn almost everything about his instrument. And, as he had done so many times before, he did it while on stage. S-Tribe had a large and devoted following, and the members of this fan base called themselves Tribers. It was the fans' devotion to S-Tribe that caused Stephen to explore a more visually exciting approach to his drumming. And with his newfound musical style and visual approach to drumming, Stephen held S-Tribe together with strong grooves, great stage presence, and a passion like he had never felt before. Soon, the band headed into the studio to record a three-song EP following its full-length album released only a year earlier. While touring the Southeast, the band was being scouted by several record companies and management services and the future seemed bright for S-Tribe. Sharing the stage with Gran Torino and the Dirty Dozen Brass Band gave Steven even more confidence. However, a crushing blow to the band came from the founding member and chief songwriter for S-Tribe when he decided he wanted to go solo. Suddenly unemployed, Steven found out that he was in demand more than ever. It only took about a week for calls to start coming in, and he again had his pick of what gig he wanted to take next. Steven decided to take a gig with another Columbia-based band called Maywater which was a power pop band. Again, he found himself touring the Southeast and sharing the stage with some big acts, such as Anthinium, Queens of the Stone Age, The Donnas, and Cowboy Mouth, to name a few. During the following summer, Maywater recorded one of its live shows and released it to their fans with a great deal of success. In October of that same year, Stephen's life would take another major turn, a turn in which he would make one of the best choices for his musical future. Exit Left, an Atlanta-based band that had major support from local venues, showed great interest in Stephen's drumming and his visually exciting live performances. In November of 2003, Exit Left made Stephen an offer that he could not refuse, to move to Atlanta, Georgia. Stephen accepted and immediately relocated to Atlanta to begin this chapter in his musical journey. With all his expenses paid, plus a weekly salary, Stephen concentrated on the music of Exit Left and welcomed the opportunity to rewrite all of the existing drum parts for their new record. Exit Left would prove to be a new challenge for Stephen, as he was given only two weeks to learn 35 songs and only one week of rehearsal before going into the studio to record the new album. Being a self-taught drummer, these obstacles proved to be a daunting task, but Stephen did not run from them. Instead, he met them head on and overcame them brilliantly. Upon the completion of the recording sessions, Exit Left started playing at clubs around Atlanta and Athens, Georgia, including the legendary 40 Watt Club and the prestigious Georgia Theater. Stephen finally felt secure about his future, but to his dismay, history would unfortunately repeat itself. One by one, each member of the band would walk away from the project, eventually moving out of Atlanta altogether. After seeing so many bands and projects fall apart, he decided to go back to school and take a break from the live music scene. 
He auditioned at the Atlanta Institute of Music and was immediately accepted into the drum program. Stephen's education at the Institute opened up a whole new world of music. No longer would he have to guess about the things he played on his drum kit. For the first time in his life, Stephen was getting an honest music education. He was beginning to see what a future with an education would hold. During his time at the Atlanta Institute of Music, Stephen became close with several instructors, absorbing knowledge like a sponge. He wanted to learn as much as he could, and it showed. Stephen graduated with an unprecedented 4.0 grade point average. Stephen was good when he came to the school, and he really aggressively attacked the curriculum here and conquered it, which is typical Stephen. Even before he graduated, Stephen was asked to substitute teach at the Institute on several occasions. He was so eager to take on new tasks and was so easy to work with, he was one of only a few students who received gig offers and job opportunities before graduating. One of the things I first noticed about Stephen was, unlike the rest of the students at Payne, he already had a pretty solid background as a player. He had been in a bunch of bands, and so he was a little bit ahead of the crowd when it came to playing the form of tune or just understanding his role on stage as a drummer. Um, I've certainly seen him grow over the last two years and uh, culminating with his graduation and the final production of his DVD, Visual Drumming, he really stood out over and above the rest of the guys as somebody who could really deliver the, the punch and, and make it look easy but look cool at the same time. Now, Stephen is a private instructor with a roster of almost 50 students. For Stephen, another benefit of studying at the Institute was that he could now read music. This newfound ability landed him a recording job playing drums for Pro Tools expert Ryan Williams. Of all the relationships Stephen cultivated at the Atlanta Institute of Music, one in particular would help catapult Stephen to new heights. Tom Knight, drum instructor and owner of video production company Nighttime Studios, collaborated with Stephen on a brand new, innovative drum instructional video based on stage presence and showmanship. Stephen O'Reilly, who is a graduate of the AIM program, has produced an instructional DVD that addresses the visual art of drumming. It's something that's missing, it's a missing link in education. And uh, an example of that, the last two uh, label projects I've done, that was something that we really had to stress. When you're auditioning before management companies, you have to learn to project and to be entertaining. And uh, this DVD accomplishes that. The guidance and help from the people that believed in Stephen, as well as his undying ability to persevere, will make him a huge success in the drumming community, as well as in the music business. Look out for big things to come from Stephen O'Reilly, as he is on his way.